بابا مطلوب تكوني الشات مو ظاهر عندي فعشان كذا ممكن احد يتبرع ويطوع ويوقفني باي فورس يعني تمام طيب انا حركة لحيالي هي انت يا ارتو ريزيدنت من انتاج ميديكال سيتي سوف نتحدث عن ديب داك انتو It's gonna be quick talk. It's not gonna be something fixed. وهذا كله كلام ترى يعتبر وجهة نظر. يعني ممكن الكلام اللي أنا أقوله تسأل شخص آخر في الإي تي سينيور أو جونيور ليفل ممكن يقول لك لا هذا الكلام غير صحيح. لكن سعينا من مش يعني نذكر كلام ون almost constant and almost fixed. لكن هذا شيء قابل برضو variation. تمام؟ So our talk is going to be a brief overview about the specialty and sub-specialty work and life. We're going to mention the working opportunities after residency, the usual day as a resident, what are your duties and responsibility, and the available centers focusing in Riyadh, and how to choose a center and how to stand out. The last two last objective. Two objective. The general, uh, how to stand out, especially it's going to be to all rotations, not specifically to ENT. It's useful to all rotations. So ENT in, sp in specific is a medical and surgical specialty. It takes care of neonate and elderly. It has exposure to life-threatening cases like airway and has highly variable presentation of diseases, diseases itself, outcomes, skills, subspecialties, and work-life balance. Is this good or bad? Debatable. Uh, some people say it's bad because you have to prepare for a lot of things. Others will say it's good because you have variation that keeps you entertained during your residency and later on um, during your career as a consultant. It has multiple surgical approaches, often endoscopic, microscopic, and robotic. Robotic is coming in the future, also microscopic mainly in ophthalmology, endoscopic mainly in rhinology. Others, uh, between open and other. Like the neck is mostly open. Subspecialties, you will have otology, neurotology, and skull based surgery. This is one subspecialty. Other is rhinology and anterior skull based surgery, pediatrics and airway surgery, hidden neck oncology, laryngology, facial plastic, and reconstructive surgery. Uh, we have others. Uh, some accents not that common in surgery, but like penetrics and sleep surgery. Sleep surgery, I believe there is only one sleep surgeon in the kingdom. He's the newcomer to Saudi Arabia from King uh, Abdelaziz University Hospital. So only one from an ENT background. Yeah. And this is just. Uh, <laughs> لا <تصفيق> 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 Okay, oh, yeah. so the subspecialties, as we have mentioned, many yes. and there are many to come as well. Okay, that's all, huh? Yes, So, uh, the work life, you as a resident will suffer for sure, like all residency, especially surgical specialties. However, there are minor variations between centers. As a consultant, it depends on your subspecialty and center. And by the way, you don't have to be a subspecialized consultant. You may be a general ENT consultant. It's not mandatory to be subspecialized. And uh, for example, facial plastic surgeon, you will have better quality of life and work life balance than head and neck surgeon. And if you're working in a tertiary center, it usually uh, is an advanced center. You will have greater responsibility, variations in patients' presentation and cases, and the patient load is going to be greater. 
So your quality of life and work-life balance is going to be less than those uh, in a secondary uh, hospital or in non uh, in uh, in centers that doesn't that doesn't have this load. Uh, but a question for debate now: Who will enjoy more, Ian, to your family medicine consultant? I want to see your answers. Slowly, I shut. Who will enjoy life more, Ian, to your family medicine consultant? Family. Which family? Will you go to Ian to Both. Follow your passion. Hello. Okay. All of the speciality. Right. The job of the nurse is not this. To be honest, yes, it is all of the speciality, but it's also one third of your life in your speciality. But the baqiya, right? Is it? The baqiya, it will be between social life and personal life. You shouldn't mix those. Yani everything has to have a fixed time and place. If you mix it, you may be enjoying your life, but your surrounding may suffer. If you have a family, you don't see them a lot. They don't see you a lot. This is their right and your right as well. Ma'am? Uh, but keep this in mind. Coming back to the question, who will enjoy life more, ENT or family? I believe it's ENT. Uh, just to look on the duties. How many clinics a family medicine consultant has? It's usually full week. But let's say it's six to eight clinics per week. He doesn't have phone call at the time being, but later on he may have with the new changes in the healthcare system. In ENT, a consultant usually a subspecialized consultant in a tertiary center has one day clinic and one day OR. Others is not required to have official duty, but maybe he may be on call, he may be attending certain surgery as backup or joining other subspecialty. However, generally speaking, the main duties are one day clinic, one day OR and on calls. And the on call being in a subspecialized center or higher center, you usually have a second sometimes third on call and you are the fourth on call as a consultant. So less likely you're going to come to the hospital. See the difference? This is again, this is a debatable question and many aspects to look at and consider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are the working opportunities after residency? Uh, let's divide it into in Riyadh and outside Riyadh. In Riyadh, governmental options are limited, yet if you're outstanding, people will uh, will want you to work with them. They will hunt you down. Uh, but this is not always the case. You have great chances in private at all levels, uh, except for a resident, of course. Uh, but if you are a figure, you it's going to be even better. Figure, I mean, most of the time, social media figure. Private lives usually... Uh, those who have popular uh, popular media accounts and things like this, it will bring them uh, more more patients. Outside Riyadh, you have greater governmental options over limited private work sometimes. It depends on the region. But they have good private work as well. Uh, like let's say in Tabuk, you have limited. And the question remains, the question how, remains how long you have a position as a consultant in Riyadh. Uh, we cannot have an answer. The same thing apply for outside Riyadh. How long till you become a consultant or you have actual position for a consultant? Because you may be classified uh, as a consultant, like in, there is no uh, job opportunity as a consultant. So you work as an assistant consultant. What about Medina? I don't know. I think... There are opportunities in governmental section in Medina. How to know? See your uh, nearby hospitals. Do they have a lot of young Saudi physicians, consultants specifically, or no? Uh, if they have a lot, it means there is deficiency. There will be a time where they will replace those non-Saudis with Saudis. 
but uh, if you don't have it means if many of them are Saudis it means the chances are even limited but keep into consideration the age of the current consultant uh, there will be an age of retirement so at the time being in Riyadh uh, it's already saturated with consultant but there are centers with consultant who are near to retirement age and there are centers with fresh consultants uh, those may create job opportunities later on but not for the current r1 it's for the current r5 current assistant consultant because they're already in line they are getting there before you at the point so what are your duties and responsibilities as a resident. But uh, I'll answer to that question, Sam. Just remind me later, okay? So duties and responsibilities as a resident. It's center dependent and highly variable. Uh, some centers have higher loads, so you have to come earlier than you're required to do as per uh, working hours. Just to do your inpatient round. This is especially in, or in OR day because it usually starts earlier. And uh, it's basically clinics, inpatients, and surgeries. The variation usually is inpatient load. Some centers have high load of inpatients, others they don't have. Uh, some centers have high clinics, so you at all times and all days you will have clinics and one day OR. However, some centers you are balanced in, in between all. So again, it varies between centers. It results in variation between time of attendance, leave, and work-life balance will be affected as well. You should keep in mind that those variation will affect your studying and surgical skill development as well. For example, if you have to come early, leave late, it means most of the days of the week, it means that you cannot study a lot. Compared to one uh, in a center that attends 7.30 and leave 3.30. هذا عنده وقت يدرس أكثر منك. Work life balance for him is much better than you. Now available center in Riyadh, we can classify it into Ministry of Health and non-Ministry of Health. Uh, Riyadh's first and second health cluster. First is King Saud Medical City, King Salman Hospital. Second health cluster is King Fahd Medical City, Prince Mohammed bin Abdelaziz Hospital. Three years ago, the acceptance was directly to King Saud Medical City. Started two years ago, it's become it became a first health cluster, and King Fahd Medical City the same three years ago was alone. Now it's second health cluster. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? For those in second health cluster, it's a good thing. For those in first health cluster, I don't know. Why in second health cluster is second is is a good thing because previously KFMC was highly advanced center. Okay, they have common cases, but the main focus was. Uh, advanced. Currently, they have rotations in Prince, in Prince Mohammed bin Abdelaziz Hospital, so they have compensation. It's a balanced center at the time being. You have advanced cases exposure along with common in KFMC, and it's becoming more frequent to have common cases, adenatal selectomy, septoplasties, this and things like this, compared to Prince, uh, Prince Mohammed bin Abdelaziz Hospital, which they usually don't have a lot of advanced cases, but they have a lot of common uh, septoplasties, adenatal selectomies, VTs, and, and so on. Non MOH, uh, King Abdelaziz Medical City from National Guard, uh, National Guard, uh, Ministry of Defense, uh, Leo Prince, Sultan Military Medical City, Ministry of Interior Affairs, Security Forces Hospital, King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center, and King Saudi University Medical City. Those I don't have a lot of information about. You have to ask resident from each center about all aspects you need to know. Usually you ask a junior level and a senior level. A senior level because he already went through all the difficulties and know the advantage and disadvantage. The junior level, they usually know the disadvantage because they are the most loaded one in the team most of the time. So uh, some of them might be even depressed, so you don't take a lot of information, uh, actual realistic information from them. So you have to have a balance between a junior level and a senior level input, okay? Now, how to choose a center? You should consider multiple things, including work-life balance, knowledge gain, skill development, future job or contract opportunities, 
your chances and preferences will should be considered. From work-life balance perspective, you should consider the number of accepted resident and the lot. For example, a center that doesn't accept that does accept only two resident and have high inpatient load, high surgery number, and high high clinic load. It means that usually you will have the maximum number of call. Sometimes you're you're not going to be allowed to go post call. So this will affect greatly multiple aspects: your life, work life balance, your ability to live and enjoy life at the time being, your ability to study and uh, your ability to, to gain passion in your specialty. So the Dream Center, generally speaking, should not bring you before working hours, should not keep you after working hours, while in the hospital gives you a chance to deal with patients and develop your skills, surgical-wise and knowledge-wise, have average number of calls and allowing for a post-call, have an administrator that does the administrative aspect of clinical practice, meaning they should book the appointment you don't have to arrange for a lot of things like CT and MRIs and things like this and uh, will not exhaust you during daytime. However, this dream center does not exist. And this is residency. You're going to suffer. Sometimes you come early. Sometimes you leave late. Uh, it sometimes be two months in a row you come early. Sometimes no. It's one day per week. So those things happen, but this is part of the journey. Now, one consideration in Riyadh specifically, uh, you should consider the distance from your house. It's, it's inhumane, Sarah, to leave uh, earlier than your starting work, working hours by one hour just to reach in time. Just consider it. Okay, With knowledge gain. But by the way, don't tell anyone in, in interviews that you chose them because you're, they're close to your house. Okay? This is something you consider, but don't share it. So knowledge gain, you as a trainee should build up your basic knowledge and expand it as you progress. Should be guided during your journey, supported to ask and learn from the expert, and can have time to read. Again, go back to work-life balance as well. And you should have educational activities, it helps you to recap things. And you should keep in mind that there are exams and residencies. So if your center is happy about you, they like you, you're amazing, you're doing the job, uh, you're getting everything done on time, they ask you questions and you answer, uh, it's not enough. You will have official exams, you will have promotion exams that may fail you. Uh, those require studying, including uh, studying from references whether updated or old textbooks, so or even question bank review, if there is uh, if there is any, those will help you to pass the exam. So if your center is happy about you, but you didn't read a lot, you didn't practice questions a lot, and you failed the exam, it's like you're repeating the whole the whole year. Okay, so you should have a balance between both. Uh, the center is happy about you, and you're happy about your knowledge gain and developing. Your, uh, your knowledge. Skill development, you as a graduate should do the common independently and you're not required to do the advanced. So if you're in a center that does a lot of oncological resection and reconstruction and gives you a great chance about it, you do it, it's amazing, everything, but you don't have the bare minimum exposure of common cases like adenotal selectomies, septoplasties, and things like this, and even tracheostomy, which is a major thing, tracheostomy and lymph node biopsy. It's not the best center to train at. It's a good center, but it's not the best. Why? Because you, as an assistant consultant later on, after you finish the board and everything, you should do adenotone selectomies alone. You should do ventilation tubes. You should do tracheostomies and lymph biopsies. You're even required by regulation to act in emergency situation where airway is compromised and tracheostomy is needed. So if you cannot do it confidently and uh, in a good way, it means there is an issue. So consider this in your choosing, in your center of choice, okay? Uh, you can find uh, more details about the common disease and procedure done in, uh, in the booklet, ENT booklet. You can find it, I think, in uh, one, of the, one of the pages, they have these kind of booklets, okay? However, 
if you have a center you like a center for example that doesn't fit the criteria for common cases exposure you can compensate those deficiencies by outside rotations uh, so it's important to ask about what is the, uh, the allowed duration for outside rotations. Future job and contract opportunities. Uh, it's something unpredictable, to be honest. But at the time being, security forces hospital is building a new medical city. Will this increase the demand or a need? We don't know. Even if it increases, it, will this reach you? or it will be already saturated by those who are already graduate and living in Riyadh or want to live in Riyadh. Now the contract opportunities, those who are in turn and coming into the residency, you should consider this highly. Those who are accepted in Ministry of Health will have guaranteed payment and contract. Others, you don't know. Uh, for example, if you're uh, accepted in Prince Sultan Military Medical City, will they give you a contract or will they tell you to go find someone? sponsor you. That's a major thing at the time being. Still, this issue is not solved. Annually, you face these issues. Now, your chances and preference. Uh, there are centers who prepare their own student. Uh, they will tell you they don't, but it's actual. They, you, you can see it in their own graduate. For four, five years in a row, only those from their university are accepted. It means they're saying that they, they don't prefer their own student, but they actually do. I don't blame them, but I'm saying this as a fact. So you should consider it. Uh, you should consider it as well while choosing your internship elective where to take it. Because you may be taking one month there, but you know that their students have 70-50% higher chances than you being accepted. So consider it as well. Your chances will be even better in a center that... Uh, I've seen you as an intern, clinical attachment, or a medical student. So you should improve your rotation and your chances by taking a rotation and staying in touch. In touch, it's not only taking a rotation. There are people who take a rotation in December, but you forget about their names in March because they don't stay in touch. That's your neshba, but said the duqarib. Build up your CP, gain recommendations and references, research. It's a good option as well. And connections. Research will help you in both ways to stay in touch and to improve in your CV. Okay. Now, connections. Is it important? Anyone? Any idea? Absolutely. So again, connection, is it important or not? This is a debatable thing. Not that way. I agree. It's not wasta. It's connection. Connection, what does it mean? This is my perspective, but others may disagree. If I know someone, a resident, an inter, was interested in the speciality since a long time, was friendly, not a troublemaker, and enthusiastic, I would recommend him. So imagine if I'm a consultant and I know those facts for sure. This candidate will have higher chances than other. A center is not looking for troublemaker. A center wants يبون السلامة يعني بشخص يشتغل عنده كويس متحمس إنه يتعلم وحليل مع اللي حوله وما يسبب مشاكل واجد. If I know those facts exist, I will take him. And have it, uh, those facts will exist in multiple candidates. So they uh, they should consider other aspects as well. So even if they know this about you, but they know the same thing about 10 other candidates. But So this will not guarantee your acceptance, but it will give you a good chance. Now, how to stand up? How to stand out, this is not necessarily in ENT. This is in all aspects and all subspecialties and general specialties. So let's take it from the beginning. Uh, as an intern, your phases of each intern uh, internship rotation is going to be first day, you will be lost. Administrative work, getting your ID and team assignment, taking instruction from the team about your duties and what do they expect from you. 
Also keep in mind you that you're being observed from day one. So be at your best. This week in each rotation, you still learn how to use the system, where to go, and what, to, what the team and the consultant likes and dislike. Now, there is a trick here. The first, uh, the first week, if you take a rotation in this center uh, in a specialty that you're not interested at, the previous month, uh, the previous month, you will learn the system. You will you will know where to go. If they tell you, for example, go to CT department or radiology department, you will know where is it. So they will not struggle with you more. So they will rely on you from the second day of your rotation. The second or third week, uh, you're already oriented and they will rely on you more. This is your golden area of the month, so embrace them. Uh, try to get things done without waiting for them to ask. However, no medication or procedure without team instruction. For example, if the patient is already uh, needing a CT and they planned this from yesterday, but it's not done today, try to ask why it's not done. Go to radiology department when it's going to be done. So when the, the, the time comes and the the round, you tell them already it's not done, and I've went already there, and they have said this and that. So you will have an answer for them for a question they didn't even get to ask. So they know that you're ahead of them. In the fourth week, ask for recommendation or uh, references, evaluation, and clearance. This is basic thing. And now, fourth week, you don't usually ask strictly or straightly for a recommendation. You ask sometimes for a feedback. And this will improve you the next month. Okay. Now your duties will vary. Those are highly variable things. If you ask two residents, same specialty, same level, you will have two different answers. So my observation, most of the of the time, you will be an observer. You will have direct inpatient care in the form of progress notes, progress notes, sometimes orders, on calls, attend to the uh, attached to a resident. Clinics and OR, those are applic if applicable if you are working in a surgical specialty. And your chances in OR, by the way, is depending on the consultant. Will he let you touch the patient or not? And depends on the procedure. For example, a patient going for cochlear implant, there is a 1% chance that you will touch the patient. Why? Because it's microscopic surgery. But a patient going for total thyroidectomy, you will have a great chance to scrub in and do even suturing because it's an open area, open procedure. Two, two men can do it. Now, uh, the duties of an intern and past their chief of intern, and the answer was you have to attend the daily morning meeting at 7.45, participate with resident in all admissions, pre-op and post-op rounds, you must be the first one to arrive before the resident and drop the daily note. Attend the clinic with the consultant if there is no admission, and always communicate with the junior resident. And you, if your team doesn't have any work, you don't get to go home early. Just ask if you can attend any other activity, day surgery, attend the general screening clinic. This is to show that you're interested. If you're not interested, it's fine. Go home. But with permission, of course. So chief resident answer is going to be taking history, doing examination, and present your patient. See how simple it is? It sounds simple, but believe me, some interns don't know how to do it. Some will not, uh, will be uh, will be amazing. They can do it, but they are too shy or too afraid of making a mistake. But this is your chance to make a mistake. This is your ch chance to shine and let them know that you are there and you are outstanding. And what to do to be more involved? At the first day, tell them that you're interested in the, in the speciality and the center. Tell the resident that you want more work related, not related to clerking, but be careful how to say it. If you say, for example, uh, I want to work more with patients directly, not clerking, it means uh, that you're not happy about the current work, which is clerking. But if you say it like, uh, I will do those clerking aspects, but uh, if I can attend more clinics and more OR, once I'm done with those, uh, it would be amazing for me. It will help me exposure, uh, get a good exposure about the speciality. It will show that you are interested more and even better than others. 
ask questions and try to participate in live discussion. Try to work actively with the consultant after you're done with your primary task. But if you didn't finish your task, don't go around asking for other things to do. Don't go with the consultant trying to work with his clinic because you will have deficiencies. It will be noted by the resident and the acceptance in any program, it's not relying only on the consultant. Keep this in mind. Uh, consultants usually ask resident about the feedback. The consultant knows that you're gonna be in your best behavior, best everything when you're around him. But he will know for sure that those who notice your defects, your, uh, your negative points are gonna be the resident. So they can ask the resident. Uh, clinic and or participation app applicable. Uh, you can also participate in activity in academic activity. However, it's a tricky business. A consultant asks a resident in specific, do not volunteer the answer. It's not your question. It's not your level. Even if you know it, don't answer it. And if your if your senior did not know, you shouldn't answer. Even if you know, say I don't know. Uh, I know it's a tricky thing, it shouldn't be like this, but it's the case. So be careful about this, don't volunteer anything, and unless you are asked. Or they say, who know the answer, and you should raise your hand. إذا ما حد من السينيور رفع يده لا ترفع يدك. Okay, I hope this is clear. Now how to make a good impression. So what have worked with me is, I'll be there before the team and update them about my patients. If there are any issues, I'll try to solve it and let them know. And ask question even if I know the answer. And did not say to any request, did not say no to any request. But if someone is trying to use me, I try to avoid it. You will see someone from another team asking you to join them just because they have shortage in, in writing progress not and things like this. But I tell them, okay, I have this task from another resident or something like this in my original team. Once I'm done with it, I'll come to help you. But it will take time. So he eventually will do it. So find a way to avoid being used, but do not say directly no to any request. Try to present in the department activity. And if you're interested, you have done your work, go help others, even if they didn't ask. This has worked with me in all specialties. Uh, I have rotated in telemedicine. I have rotated in multiple uh, rotations. And I told them that I'm interested. Uh, it's a simple thing, believe me, to write a progress note uh, when the resident is having a high number of inpatients. It's not your patient, it's his patient. You're not assigned to this patient, but you wrote a progress note for him. It's gonna be something he will not forget for. He will not forget and he will talk about it to others. So uh, be aware of this. Other aspect is that if you worked in a center in two different specialties, you're not going to be guaranteed that the two residents from uh, two specialties, they don't know each other. You may work, for example, in ER, or let's say orthopedic, for example, and you worked in ENT. There are two residents who know each other in both specialties. If you are bad in orthopedic and you came in ENT acting that you are good, they will know because they may ask um, in the same center. So keep this into consideration. If you are in the center of interest, be at your best at all times, including in specialties that you're not interested at. Do not do the extra, but do the bare minimum and the basic. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I've done my best to get things done fast. Uh, if you see in this picture, MRI to be done tomorrow, we'll contact the patient. This was a record in the hospital. This is why they know me, because the MRI appointments were, were usually three months, four months, even if urgent. So, I I figured a way to, to do it in one day. So, it was a new record for them. They mentioned it. So, it's just asking politely. Find the right person and ask him in a nice way. People will try to help, but approach them nicely. So try to do with uh, research with the consultant as well. So I have asked the, an internal medicine resident. At that time, he was R1. At the time being, he's R3. So this was his answer. Attitude, knowledge, not just the basic. By attitude, he's talking about being polite, respectful, and address appropriately. 
This includes male and females. For males, uh, your attitude is important. The way you dress is important. And the way you talk is important. For females, the same thing applies, including your makeup. It's not a party. We have seen interns, you, you'd be surprised about the amount of makeup they put, about the, the, the dresses they, they wear. So keep this in, into consideration. Knowledge, prepare your basic. Timing, try, try not to leave earlier than expected. Uh, presentation, try to present your patient in the round uh, with the team, including the imaging that labs. So have update about your patient and present them. And ask for a feedback on your performance in each rotation, usually from a senior or consultant, and sometimes from even the junior resident. Now, the same question was asked to our chief resident. Currently, the chief resident at that time is an acting uh, consultant in one of the center of ENT. So the answer was no history taking, do physical examination, presenting your case, doing tests as required, and follow updates of your patient. See how simple it sounds? Again, not everyone does it. Not everyone know how to do it. Why? Because some interns will utilize the previous months in preparing for SMLE. So when they come in the month of interest, that is ENT or other specialty, they don't know the basic. You come in a month of, let's say, October, December, or golden months like January, February, and you say you're interested, but you don't act like you're interested. I believe you that you're interested, but you don't know how to do these things. What have you been for the past six months? It means that you did not attend your previous rotations well. You didn't gain the basics of it. So an intern who started in July rotating in ENT, I would have different expectations from that intern uh, to an intern who came to me, for example, in December, because that intern in December should have done the progress month, should know how to write it, should know how to approach a patient. See the difference? So your timing is important. If you're interested to take the rotation in the golden month, just prepare yourself in advance in previous rotations. Come prepared. It will be considered this period. Now a consultant answer, uh, the same question. Uh, this His answer, as he stated, we usually ask the resident about you. We also should ask the nursing staff about you and punctuality is important. And we do not expect knowledge from you, basics are enough, but if you know more, it would be nice. That is not what we rely on. And this is what he actually said as well. Keep in mind that each level has an expectation. What is expected from our four will differ from our one or intern. We, we, for example, expect leadership skills in our four, but in turn, we need only hardworking, enthusiastic interns. You didn't see the word knowledge in this. You didn't see any other things than hardworking and enthusiastic. This is just to show you're interested. Now, mistakes to avoid. I think this is the last uh, area. Uh, so the first impression is the last impression. Do not be late and careless. Being rude for, uh, to your teammate or nursing staff or patients, you're being observed at all times. Something, if an incident happened in your team, believe me, the whole department will know. I mean, at a resident level. Uh, ENT in Riyadh is a small, small group. Uh, if you, you can gather them in WhatsApp group. They're like less than 60 residents in, in all Riyadh at all levels. So if something major happened, it will be, of course, uh, spread uh, It will spread around. Imagine in your center. Uh, or rotation, for example, in KFMC, you have done something that was a major thing, everyone will know. Okay, So it's a small area, don't be, rude. be at your best at all times. This includes the nursing staff. By the way, if you're an intern, you came for two weeks or one month duration in any center, the nursing staff there has been for 10 or 15 years. If there is an issue, sometimes they would leave the nursing staff more. They will because they have experience with the with the nursing staff. They don't know you very well, but they know the nursing staff very well. There are nursing staff who blame everyone, who will try to make it look bad. 
but they know this is the this is her or his behavior. They know that you're not guilty. Of it. You have to consider this as well. As well. So uh, try to avoid being hesitant or shy or afraid of making a mistake. This is your time to make a, uh, any mistake. Don't make any major mistake, but and don't do it in purpose. But this is your time to learn. And if you don't know, say I don't know. But keep in mind that you may be asked again the same question. So go and read and come back prepared. Or even if you want to do it better, ask, uh, come back again. If the consultant did not uh, tell you the answer or the resident did not tell you the answer, just come back, tell him, Doctor, I have read this, uh, the question you asked me about uh, the last time. This is the answer. Is this uh, the answer you're looking for? Or there is a different uh, thing in mind. And you may even do it better and ask them, uh, I have now a question, Doctor. Is this what they mean? And if this is actually what they mean, does that mean this and that? So you elaborate more that you show him that you answered the question he raised, but you actually dig deeper into it and you have more questions raised. This means that you're interested to learn even more and you are enthusiastic about the speciality. See how everything is connected together? And uh, respect your senior. Literally, that's how we have And if you have a lot of people, especially to senior level. So have this in mind. You may be friendly with some of the residents. It depends on the character of the, uh, of the resident. So it's something variable between everyone. But keep this in mind. So generally speaking, the baseline is to respect everyone and have boundaries. Uh, respect will be there for, for everyone actually, but with the time, so have this in mind. Now, using assembly as an excuse to everything, you have duties, you should do it. If you have an assembly, just let them know that I have an assembly at that day. Uh, they like, okay, assembly, you should prepare. That's your task, you should do. So it depends on the resident and the team and the load and everything. And keep in mind, patients are patients. I've seen an intern, when I was an intern, actually, he was given a task to arrange for, for example, CT for this patient, urgent CT. He would tell the team, okay, I will go do it. He will stay away around for 30 minutes studying his assembly. Then he goes to do the task. So this is inhumane. Okay, I know that you need to study, but this is patient care and patient health we're talking about. So patients should not be in this process of you trying to study. Do the best for the patient and the, uh, for the best interest of them and do your duties and try to compensate any deficiencies in your preparation. Now, uh, getting into the rotation with the presumptive decision that you're not interested, you shouldn't do this. Uh, people will be dramatic most of the time, so uh, have an open mind about anything you go through. If you're working in medicine, for example, you went into medical speciality. What is in medical school is different what is in reality. Okay, So uh, if you go into a telemedicine rotation with a presumptive decision that you don't like it, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you go with an open mind, you're going to take the full experience and you're going to decide with a, with a confident this, with a confident mind that this is my decision and this is final. There will be a time that you'll be hesitant. Am I making this decision correctly? Am I choosing the right speciality for me? What's going to help you is that you may include the previous specialties you have, that you have worked in with an open mind, with the full experience. Try to compensate any deficiencies or try to know, uh, for example, something that is for sure 100% eliminated you're not gonna go for it. You can put those rotations in your SMLE exam uh, date. So you don't have this conflict already in both the uh, presumptive decision and the SMLE point, okay? Now, if you know what you want, try it at multiple centers, not only the outstanding ones. Uh, again, going back to internal medicine, if you take this rotation, in King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center in Riyadh, it's going to be outstanding, outstanding rotation because they have the best in everything. Okay. 
But if it if you take it in an average center, it's gonna be average rotation. You should not build your decision about this specialty in a center like King Fifth Specialist Hospital. You should build it in an average center because there is a high chance that after your residency and your graduation and board certification, you're gonna go back to an average center and work. So you have to know the common, uh, the things that you're gonna work with, uh, you you're gonna work with, and the environment you're gonna work at. This should be the sole uh, experience you should build your decision about about the speciality. Inshallah, na hawa pa hada nukta. The asking to leave early is a mistake to avoid. It should be offered to you. Of course, if you have an appointment, urgent appointment, clinic, health issues, anything, you just uh, give them a, head, a heads up and, and tell them that I have to leave for this and that. Tamam. Being clear is amazing, but uh, leaving early at all times is a thing to consider. Now, using headphones in the clinic, OR, or sitting away in OR, uh, this actually is a bad impression at all levels, inter, resident, medical student, clinical attachment. If you're interested, you should be able to observe. You shouldn't be using headphones and your phones in the OR especially. Because I know you're not working in the patient, you're not touching the patient, you feel bored, so you start using your phone. But someone is noting that you're not interested in what's going on, so he will keep in mind that if you're upstanding in all aspects and they have 10 other uh, candidates for the same situation, they are all outstanding, but you were using your headphones and things like this in OR, you'll be an ex they will be having higher chances for acceptance. So sometimes you have, because everyone in ENT, especially applying for ENT, usually everyone is outstanding. It's gonna be the minor thing that differentiate each and every one. So you should minimize those minor things that eliminate you from the list. And also talking uh, in the OR, usually uh, two interns will have fun talking around, two medical students will, will figure out a topic that should not be delayed, so they will talk and uh, they will not be attention in OR. So this is also a negative point. Now, nomination and acceptance. Uh, in brief, ENT is becoming a more competitive specialty than before. The changes that has been made in the nomination and the ranking points and everything, it's it's making a favor to those who are going into service residency and into service job, I mean. So keep in mind that you may go into service and clinical attachment to be nominated and then to be accepted. Uh, unfortunately, the positions available for acceptance is different than those for nomination. So you have, for example, 25 nominated and 20 seat for acceptance. So all of those 25 are outstanding. All of those actually deserve a seat. But unfortunately, they only have 20 seats. They want to take more, but they cannot. So if you're nominated and not accepted, that does not mean that you're not qualified. That does not mean that you did, you don't deserve the speciality or you're a bad candidate. No, it means that they could not accommodate you. They want you, but they could not accommodate you. So try to find out why they couldn't accommodate you and they found someone is more suitable for the seat. And, and try to solve it for the next time. Yet, as a friendly advice, don't stick into one speciality. Uh, yani each speciality, if you're really dying for the speciality, give it two years. If it's not accepted, go find someone else. Go find another speciality. Don't stay without a board for life. If you're not, if you're interested in the in the uh, in becoming a consultant. But by the way, this is only Google Parat. Already, you will have a job. You will have payment. You will enjoy your life. You'll be more than average. Uh, in, in the whole uh, kingdom in terms of salary, work-life balance, and and uh, prestige in life. You're going to be more than average. Like if you become, if you want more, you'll be a consultant. So you go into speciality. If you want more uh, easy things in life, you become a consultant or you go into sub-speciality and speciality. الإشكالية في السيرفس إنه فقط أنت العصا اللي يحركوها في وقت الحاجة 
لو يحتاج احد في الاي ار وانت قاعد تغطي جي اس حياخذك من الجي اس يحطك في الاي ار ببساطه لانه ذا لو اند ذا ريجوليشن سبورت هيز ديسيجن ذات يو ار ذير تو فيل ذا نيد فا ذا اونلي واي تو سكيور يور بوزيشن ان سبيشاليتي از بينج بورد سيرتيفايد تمام فا ذس وات ميكس يور لايف ايزير بات اتس نوت سمثينج مانديتوري يو شود هاف ا جوب payment you rely on life and and you, you get relaxed actually it's not a low payment it's a good payment shall akhar abhath an outside kingdom uh, chances uh, you have chances in germany i think hatta fi faransa wa wa irlanda imkan fi fi chances there so don't stick to saudi arabia only look around don't only put your mind in this is the only thing i need unless you have a social issue حتى نفس الشيء نطبق على المكان ما هو بس بالرياض ابحث wherever you get accepted go unless you have major social issue you cannot go تمام those five years is gonna pass easily uh, you wouldn't imagine how fast it, it would go so just keep it into consideration now this presentation has been made and prepared with the help of amazing physician at multiple levels our two three acting consultant and consultant this was reviewed and modified by dr ahmed al-salih yara and uh, buthayna uh, r3 dr ahmed r2 dr yara and dr buthayna in kfmc now any questions طيب سؤال خلينا ناخذ سؤال سعد اللي اول سعد كان يسال عن الفيشو بلاستيك شكله مهتم بالكروش شوي How is the outcome in ANT surgeon specializing in ANT facial plastic? What do you mean by outcome? You mean patient outcome or what? بالنسبة لسؤالك يا سعد فيما يتعلق بال ال outcome if you're talking about disease of the outcome it's amazing this is what I meant in variation and outcome and presentation and diseases في patients يجوك في الهدف مثلا عنده terminal disease عنده thyroid cancer for example or hypopharyngeal cancer okay ما أقول لك financial الله المستعان يا سعد الله يصلحك طيب نرجع بس خلنا نقطة هذه أول شيء كملنا. Uh, those points uh, اللي هو يتعلق بالـ outcome diseases outcome those with, with advanced disease have low survival rate. لكن عندك patients with nasal obstruction for example uh, you did septoplasty for them they gonna breathe fine. So they gonna thank you every time they see you. So there is variation. ان اي ان تي قاعد تتكلم انت عن الانكم جنرالي سبيكينج اتس جود انكم اي ديدنت ورك ان برايفت صراحه تو ليت يو نو اكزاكتلي بات يو هاف راينولوجي اوتولوجي اند هيد اند نيك اند ايفن بيدياتريك سو راينولوجي ذي دو ذا كومن ثينك ان برايفت ايفريثينج اكشولي از كومن هذه ون اوف ذا اميزنج ثينجز ان اي ان تي يو ويل نيفر ران اوت اوف جوب اف يو ديدنت فايند a way or a place to do OR, you will do clinics only. تمام? Uh, at all aspects, you will never run out of job. Regarding the income specifically, uh, it's uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be related into subspeciality. Rhinology have more chances to have more private work than ontology, for example. And uh, pediatric is even more. Regarding the income, المدخول المادي بالبيدياتريك يمكن يكون less than الورينولوجي لانه you do adenotonsils ما ادري كم سعره سعره في البروفيت صراحه بس that's it تمام ادري ما اعطيتك اجابه كافيه لكن للاسف I didn't work in private yet كلمني بعد خمس سنوات تمام طيب is the outcome after residency will vary depending on your center 
I don't know, AZ, what do you mean by this? But if you mean uh, outcome in relation to fellowship chances, it may. Uh, peace enters into on fellowship chances. Uh, you have greater chances of acceptance sometimes, but I'm not sure about this. Uh, the outcome, your outcome, it shouldn't be huge variation. Okay, if you variations of skills, but knowledge-wise, it uh, all of you should be equal. And if you have same level as others. At least this is the case of this is the scenario. Knowledge wise, you should be all the bare minimum at least. Skill wise, this is variation between centers, but at least you should master the basics. What I mean by the basics uh, BT insertions, adenotransalectomies, lymph node biopsies, tracheostomies, airway, generally speaking, and septoplasty. And I think we consider as well meningoplasty, liver and meningo brain perforation, okay, the heavy part of the basics. So if you master those, you're mastering what you need as a general need. Uh, to my knowledge, maybe it's taxes management or the this is the most basic things to consider. Uh, and there is, I think, slight variation between centers. However, you should compensate this during your residency in centers that does have this uh, in abundance, and you should work with it. Can you elaborate more regarding lifestyle and residency? Well, uh, the major thing that affects your life in residency is going to be in, in, in residency year is going to be the residency itself. And your rights are less than an employee. A service you can do, for example, you take a leave. The hours are very short. You can take a nap. You shouldn't come before 7.30 and nobody can tell you to come before 7.30. Even if they say it, it's residency, it's difficult. And you are learning here. You should come early to do the, uh, the, the clerking part, to do the OR things, for example. So you cannot uh, discuss this way with them. Have one aspect. The other aspect is that you have to read and work. That you have to study and work. And ENT is actually a huge subspeciality. Uh, it's going to be affecting you as well. No, لازم بعد ما تخلص دوامك تروح تقرأ. عشان كده نقول السنتر اللي يعطيك الاكسبوجر كويس and with variations. وبنفس الوقت light in terms of on call, alarm for post call and things like this is a good center. فما ينفع تروح السنتر كله advance. Uh, and you will have a good lifestyle. لا, it will be affected. وبرضو نفس الاسبت uh, يتعلق with social support. You have uh, someone living alone is going to be struggling more than those living with families and things like this. How is the lifestyle generally in tea? Uh, again, as a resident, you will suffer. As an acting and acting consultant and specialist, it will be average, amazing, because you will have first and call. You will have two, four calls per month, and it's center dependent. And uh, usually, in many of the centers, it can be a specialist or an assistant consultant assigned to a consultant or two in one specialty. So you will have directed practice. As a consultant, you have a team to work uh, a lot of things for you. I talk about the centers that have residency program. If, if you don't have this, you will be working in a center without residents. Uh, retraining resident, but there may be a separate resident or specialist to help you and assist you in your practice. I couldn't move during your working hours, reasonable. After you leave, nobody can call you. And hatta, if you have inpatient, you are responsible for them only during inpatient. Uh, during working hours, after that, it's the on call duty. Uh, it's amazing as a special as a consultant level, Salah. You can enjoy it. How many residents accepted their KPMC? It's not KPMC anymore, it's second health cluster. Second health cluster, I think this year, they gave you four residents. Okay. Of course, the year is three. The year is three. The year is three. Yazid, I think you have a baseline surgical skill. What do you think about most helpful things in CP? Uh, this is center dependent. There might be a session for this. 
but in brief, it's interdependent. We center the him hal abhath when you have presented in multiple conferences. ولا شيء هذا كله. فا أنت تركز على الأبحاث عندهم. فا it depends on your center of interest. We center لا والله. الأبحاث بالنسبة لهم it's a point to consider. فحلو نكون عندك بحثين ثلاثة هالعدد. وقدم مرة ولا حضرت مؤتمر ولا whatever. يعني أهم شيء you showed interest in the specialty and you showed interest in the knowledge itself. وبنفس الوقت شافوك اشتغلوا معك عارفينك. فاشياء زي كذا وما اخذ روتيشنز كثير اي ان تي يعني هذه بوينتس تو كونسيدر لكن سي في شود بي دايركتد ما ينفع كل نفس السي في تفسيره كل السنترز يو شود هاف مانيبيليشنز اند سام بوينتس فور ايش سنتر بيكوز اوف ذير انترست تمام هاو تو دو بوينتس تو بروف ان سي في اور انترفيو بيهيفير اف نوت اكسبتد والله يا دكتور اقول هذه يو كان جو to the program director after the final match, doctor. Uh, and I plan I was a candidate nominated this year, but unfortunately I didn't get matched. I'm hoping next year to become a stronger candidate. Best doctor, I need to think to know what are the things I need to know. Uh, I believe having always having defects that should be worked on and improved. I think the doctor, how can you tell me points to improve through the whole center. Any center you did not get accepted at, uh, you can ask them directly. Uh, ask the consultants who were involved in that interview. Uh, next year, uh, they will ask you. يعني they will they sh they can recall your name. يعني ممكن حتى you stay in touch. ممكن يقول لك والله research wise you didn't have a lot of research. تقول طب دكتور أنا عندي أفكار بحثية وكذا. But I don't know how to apply it. هل ممكن دكتور يكون عندكم بس center research opportunities applicable أو شيء زي كذا. I can work on it. But this way you reach to become in touch directly with them. But this is how I think you can approach these kind of things. And don't rely if you get into service resident. Uh, opportunity, but you didn't get matched. Don't rely on them recalling you from the internship. Every month, we have 10 interns or eight interns and different number of clinical attachment depending on the on the month. So less likely they will recall each and every intern by name. Uh, Having one of the points to consider as well for those for males specifically, putting your picture in in your WhatsApp is a good thing. You know. I may know, I may know interns, but I cannot recall their names. Tamam? If I, I take a look at his face, I can't recall him. Until uh, Vikra. That'd be one of the points you can consider as well. Tamam? Uh, stay in touch. Do not lose touch with your connections, uh, meaning resident and uh, consultant and even assistant consultant. Now, comparing to North America, how is the quality of residency in ENT in Riyadh? Actually, it's it's good. I didn't go to North America to, to say it, so this question should be asked to those in uh, to consultant who came back from there. But to my belief and to my knowledge, uh, here we have good practice. We have good skill development in most centers. There are centers that have high advanced case okay that uh, you don't get a lot of cut uh, generally speaking it's good but you have to ask this specific question to those uh, who came back from there and uh, by the way why should you consider outside opportunities when you have nice opportunities here you cannot only delay uh, let's say delay your financial stability for a while and struggle more during residency because it's not gonna be a piece of cake. You're gonna you're gonna have chances later on as a consultant, but you may have the same chances when you take residency here and fellowship in North America. So consider all aspects, not only residency. And this is a major point. Residency is one aspect in your life. Work is one aspect of your life. You have other aspect, including personal and social life. So you shouldn't build your decision in the center and in the specialty based on your interest only. You should consider all aspects. You shouldn't be happy only in work and sad otherwise. Okay. Which centers would you recommend for medical students to try out the specialty during summer? 
Hey, that's a tough question. Go for a center that uh, doesn't have advanced cases. Tamam. Have نقول uh, عندهم mentality of teaching a lot. مثلا الجامع ممكن يكون مفيد خيار جيد الحرس ممكن يكون خيار جيد KFMC ممكن يكون خيار جيد بس برضو it depends on the rotation if they have a lot of interns there will be less time for you as a medical student to try the specialty uh, or to be more involved in the team in the term of suturing, scrubbing in and things like this so balance things between both ممكن تروح السنتر زي مثلا مستشفى الامير محمد بن عبد العزيز. They don't have a lot of president and they don't have usually a lot of interns in the specialty. So they will be given more chances. And uh, to keep this in mind, uh, centers that have, high lo- have a lot of regulations, you have lower chances of participation. Uh, لانه يحبون النظام والتنظيم والنرسنج ستاف تقدر تتكلم وتقول انه والله هذا medical student should not do this or that. But if you have a center that doesn't have this high regulation uh, number, you would be more exposed and uh, able to do more things in the rotation and get more benefit. Other than outside rotations, how to compensate with your surgical skilling center? We're not able to do multiple procedures. Wallahi, you may ask the consultant, the program director, to go to and I did effect for the whole thing. resident. Follow chain of command and things like this. To go, I have defected these kind of procedures. I want to do it more. How should I compensate? You know, he should take an action, whether or he can take an action. I don't know if he should or not. So I have this. Uh, you know, he will tell you suggested solution. The program director and the faculty there should be able to support you. Uh, they are there to help you gain what you need. So, whatever defect you think you have, ask them. For example, if you have deficiencies in adenotransferectomies, you may reach to the uh, program director and tell him, Doctor, during my residency, during the previous three years, I have only done this amount of adenotransferectomy. I should do more. What are the solutions? So there are going to be two ways. Either he will send you to outside rotations where they have these procedures in common, or they will accept more cases for adenotransferectomies and you will be able to do it. So try to be involving them in the pro- in the problem more so will, they will help you in the solution do you recommend uh, putting personal photo in cv i wouldn't do it صراحه i wouldn't it's not uh goal look up about the professional way of doing it Was the, will this be a professional way or not? I don't know. Uh, personally, I wouldn't do it. إلا إذا تعرفي بعض centers ممكن يطلبوا منكم إنكم ترسلون الصورة وكذا يعني that's fine. تمام. غير كذا غالبا المقابلات حتكون حضوري أو حتكون زوم. During that time, you will open the camera. تمام. أبد العفو ما سويت للواجب والله عنا وياكم على مساعدة الغير وهذا very important thing to keep in mind later on you will be asked to help someone they will ask you to present something uh, don't hesitate uh, it's about taking and giving most of the things you have seen I've presented is information I've got from my seniors or experiences I have uh, taken so you should consider all and help whenever you can help إن شاء الله كانت سيشن ممتعة مفيدة ما تكبلت عليكم إن شاء الله وأتمنى أنكم توصلون اللي تطمحون له ويستخيروا دائما بكل خياراتكم <تصفيق>